Well, I, I want to thank uh, the Schenker Institute for inviting me to speak here today. I'm going to talk very quickly about the ideas behind differentiated compensation and to come at it with a little bit different point of view. I come at it from a point of view of working these systems in the field from experience. My first experience was developing systems like this back in the early 90s and been working on them ever since. And I think I'm going to share some of the thoughts that we have come up with over the period of time about making the difference between compensation and its effect on achievement in schools and, and the school system itself. The first slide I want to show is a cartoon by Gary Larson. It's a really old cartoon, and I always start with this one, because it makes a point. The point here is, uh, I'll read the caption real quickly, high above the hush crowd, Rex tried to remain focused. Still, he couldn't shake one nagging thought. He was an old dog, and this was a new trick. And the new trick here would be the compensation system within this, uh, in schools because everybody talks about we're entrenched in salary schedules and all those kind of things and we're going to teach this dog a new trick. The issue here is the dog on the wire is not the teachers. It's the system. The system we've built in public education in this country is around a salary schedule. If you think about it, the way we do things, recruit and all those kind of things, all are built around those things. The way teachers go through their careers is built around that. And if you don't change the entire system, it's really hard just to change one part of it. And that's what I'm talking about with the, with the compensation system. So you have to look at other things. And I've just listed a few things here that have to be talked about. Recruitment and lic licensure, induction, mentoring, career advancement, retention. How are those all going to change in schools? How are they going to be? And then you add in, how, do you, the grow, how does the organization grow from the system and not just reward people? How does, how does it build capacity within the system? And the other thing is, is how does it affect the evaluation and professional standards that go on in schools? What's valued? What's valued more? What's valued less? Because when you start talking about compensation, let's be honest here. We are talking about valuing things. We're not just talking about having things. You put numbers thing, eventually that paycheck's going to have a number on it. And that means you have to make a lot of value judgments. And that's what happens in a lot of times. People say, oh, we want to do these things, but they run away from the tough questions about value and value judgments. And we can't do that if we're going to talk about these things. My next slide really oversimplifies the issue a little bit, but I think this is a good place to start. I think it's a good way to start a conversation here today. It's, it shows there's really two kinds of systems that we see in the country right now. The first one is a reward system. We're very familiar with this. The teachers who get the high test scores. The teachers who, you know, some kind of metric at the end, we're going to do it. It's lag, using lagging indicators to decide how we're going to do things. The problem with those systems, they are terrible at helping the system improve. They work exactly how they're supposed to. They reward something that has happened, but they don't do anything to improve the system moving forward. If I'm a teacher and I'm going to try to move forward, I have to remember what I did maybe way back eight months ago to figure out how do I repeat that. And there's no way the system can learn from that. The other kind of a system is a system built around organizational growth. This is a system where we... It's much harder to do, requires much more sophisticated implementation, much more sophisticated administration. And a question has to come to you about the cost-benefit analysis of that. Of all this effort into that system, is it worth it? Because a lot of times, people will kind of the, do these systems and they wonder because they do take a lot of people's time. They do take a lot of money. And is the cost-benefit worth it? The answer would be in the quality of the system you, you create. If you're just trying to solve some political question, the answer is going to be a, you know, a very strong no. But if you're really trying to move the system forward, how you create that system is, is critically important. I'm going to talk about a couple other things that, you know, that are important aspects of doing these systems. One is a strategic and systematic approach. We're at A today, and we want to get to C. Way too many times... People try to forget all the little steps that have to happen between those. 
You have to go through B and learn from A to B to make your step from B to C even better. That's the only way this will work. You're not going to turn something around. Think of just basic scientific thought and development. You do little of experiments and you say, okay, what did we learn from that? And then we take it and we learn from that and we make our next experiment even better. That's exactly what this is. This is not an event. Moving a teacher compensation system from one to the other is not an event. It's a process. It's an ongoing process. And if you're not in it for the long haul, don't do it because it won't work. There has to be. There's no way any group, let's say there's a, a committee or whatever, can think of all the things that they have to have have to think about right at the front end to think of all the different job descriptions, all the different people that are represented within the system. You have to build in that collaboration. You have to build in their work with you, and it's going to take time. And that's why you have to create a system that's strategic and systematic. The next thing I want to talk about is a very powerful tool. And this is one of the biggest issues why performance pay or comp differentiated compensation or whatever you want to call it does not work in a lot of places. Because we make the judgment or the cause so far away from the people who are involved in it that they can't see how they influence the outcomes. The stronger you make it from where what I did to this is what I get, the stronger this will have the effect. Now, this is an extremely powerful factor. And this, can, I'm going to be very cautious with this is, a, this is a good way to get good things to happen, but it also can have negative consequences. Let me put it very clearly. In or on Wall Street, when they bundled some prime mortgages and sold them, those people knew exactly how they got the result they got and what they would get paid for it. And they did it over and over again, not thinking about the consequences of all that. This is a very powerful thing, and you have to control it, you have to be smart about it, and it's about positive growth and not just growth itself. You have to think logically about using this stuff. And this is where we kind of end up, and this is why these programs a lot of times seem to go haywire. I'm going to stop with some basic requirements. The two things I talked about, systematic and making sure you look at the effect of those things, those are basic must-haves. These are also ideas that you got to think about. The first one is working together. This isn't something you impose on people on Thursday. This is something you work with them over a period of time so they believe in it, they trust it, they own it. If the people who are subject to the systems feel they are the victim of it, they're going to figure out a way not to make it work. It's about ownership. It's about making it work for people. That's what you want to do. You want to make it work for teachers and kids. So the only way you're going to do that is build the trust within the system. Adequate base salary, this isn't about replacing a salary. This is about adding to and building careers for people. You know, I'm not going to go down the list. Some, you know, funding is a huge problem in a lot of places. Must be understandable. Can't be super complex for people to understand. We see this when a lot of systems where people say, I can't even understand why I got paid. I'm looking, I'll look down here at Matt, and he'll know exactly what I'm talking about. There's, there, there might be a place where the teachers called the pay system they had the lottery because they couldn't figure out. They just said, my numbers come up, and I don't know why. That's not a system that builds trust. That's not a system that says, I can do more of that. You know, all you can do in lotteries is buy another ticket. You can't increase your odds. We want to make a system that's not like a lottery. We want to do systems that work. But let me put the caution out there. We must be smart about this. We must make a logical cost-benefit analysis of this is what we need to do when we need to do it. And we shouldn't be just jumping into differentiated compensation because somebody in a state office or somebody somewhere said that's what I think would work. It takes more thought than that. It takes a lot of determination. It takes a lot of educational movement. And it takes a lot of work by a lot of hard-working people. And it requires teachers to be at the table from the beginning and making sure that the interests of students are at the table as well. So with that, I'm going to turn it over here to my friend. And Thanks, Bob. I don't think I go back to you. I'm going this way, right?